Hi friends, welcome to Timing Python series. In this video, we're going to talk about how to create your own syslog server in Python. Basically, syslog is a standard protocol to send logs between machines and generally machines use syslog to send logs to a centralized syslog server. If you want to know about how to install a simple syslog server in Windows without any code, I've already created a video on that and I will leave the link of that video in the description of this video. So why would you want to create a syslog server in Python? Maybe you don't want to install a third party software or you want to do some more automation after receiving the syslogs which is a customized logic or if you want to create some data pipelines or else you just want to test whether syslog is coming or not without installing a third party software. Alright, let's see how we can build a syslog server in Python. It's actually really simple. You just have to import this socket server Python module. So let's get started with coding and try to create a very minimal syslog server in Python. I'm going to take a blank folder and I'm going to open it with VS code. Let's create a new file and let's just name it server.py. All right, let's try to import the module socket server. Let's try to create a server instance using socket server. So I'm going to write server equal to socket server dot UDP server. And here I'm going to give the host and port as a tuple. So the host would be 0.0.0.0. .0 that means the IP address of this machine. And the port will be 514 because syslog standard UDP port is 514. And then here you're going to have the syslog handler which you have to create. So let's try to create a handler called syslog UDP handler. So we didn't create this class. So let's try to go ahead and create this handler class. So I'm going to just copy this and create a new class. So I'm going to write class of syslog UDP handler. And this is going to inherit from socket server dot base request handler so this is going to be the request handler and we have to override a method called handle so this is the handle so when the syslog comes to a syslog server let's try to just print it so first let's try to extract the syslog coming to the server so for that i'm going to write data equal to bytes dot decode so what we're going to do is we are going to decode the bytes into string basically so the bytes of the syslog will be coming in the self dot request of zero and we're gonna strip any spaces if present. So self dot request of zero dot strip, and that's it. This is the syslog string data. So let's try to print this actually. Print data. All right, we've got our syslog handler ready, and now our server is ready. Let's try to make our server listen for the request. So for that, I'm gonna write server dot serve forever, and here I'm gonna mention the poll interval. So poll interval equal to 0 0.5. So what poll interval does is that for every 0.5 seconds, the server will check if there is a shutdown command given to it or not. That's all. And now the bare bones syslog server is already ready. So I've got my server. So I need to test my server, right? So I need to send some data to this server. So let's try to create a file called index.py and it will send syslogs to this server. So using a script, I will send syslog to this server.py. So let's try to create this index.py and this is the code to send logs to the syslog server. So it's pretty simple actually. You just use the logging module to send logs to the syslog server. You're going to use the syslog handler of the logging module. And there you will mention the local host and port 514. And you add the syslog handler to the logging module and then just log it. That's all. So here I'm sending two logs to the syslog server. So first let's try to run this server.py. I'm going to run this. And you can see without error, the server is still running. That means my server is running. And let's try to create a new command line instance. And let's try to run this index.py actually. So I'm going to write python index.py. And let's try to see here, I've got two syslogs logged here. Let's try to expand this. And again, let's try to run this python index.py. And here again in python, you can see these two syslog messages are being printed out. So you can see our syslog server is running with very less lines of code. And these are the syslogs sent from our python script. And our syslog handler actually got the data and parse it into string and then printing it. That's why we are getting this print statements. All right, this was the very bare bones syslog server. Let's try to dress it up a little bit. So I'm gonna just add if name equal to main because if you're running this from the command line, you can write if name equal to main and then let's try to wrap it in a try except because if you press control C, you can actually stop the server. So for that, I'm gonna write this whole code in the try block and in the except, if it's gonna be an IO error, or system exit i'm going to say raise that error or else if it's just a keyboard interrupt i'm going to just write ctrl c press shutting down the server all right let's try to segregate the variables now so i'm going to write host equal to our host of the server where it's going to listen and port equal to the port at which the server is going to listen 
and let's try to replace this with the variables and that's it this is a very minimal syslog server which works and we have already tested this syslog server by sending logs through this index.py python script all right if you want this syslog server to run in production scenario you just can't print it in the command line you would like to print it in a text file as logs right so let's try to use the logging module to actually log the syslogs to a text file so for that i'm going to import the logging module so i'm going to write import logging and instead of printing the data let's try to log the data logging dot info of data let's try to comment this out let's try to do some very minimal logging config so the logs are visible so i'm gonna write logging dot basic config and here i'm gonna say the level will be logging dot info so that info logs will be visible and i'm gonna say the format of the message would be just show the message that's all and since i want to log it to a file let's try to give the file path so i'm gonna write file name equal to applogs.log or applogs.txt and file mode will be append because i'm going to append to the existing file and that's it now our logging model is also configured so when i get logs to the syslog server those should be logged using the logging module into a text file called applogs.txt so let's try to run this server now and you can see the server is running let's try to open a new command prompt and let's try to run this python file python index.py so let's try to open our file explorer and you can see applogs.txt is created and let's open it as a text editor and here two logs are coming let's try to run this index.py again and if you just reload this you can see four logs so that's it using the logging module we are able to log our syslog server data into text files that means we have already created a syslog server which stores logs in a text file all right so far so good if this syslog server is listening for logs and let us think a million logs are coming to the syslog server then dumping million logs into a single text file will not be good right so it's better to have log rotation and compression to actually save space and rotate log files so it's pretty simple in my case i'm using a time rotating file handler which actually rotates logs after a desired interval in my case i'm rotating logs for every 24 hours and if i log using this file handler the logs will be rotated and compressed for log compression we are defining the custom rotator and we are using a custom namer because we want our log file to be dot zip instead of dot log right all right let's try to understand how we created a logger that can perform log rotation and compression first we are getting a logger and then we are setting the log level and then we are using this time rotating file handler to create a log handler called file handler and here we are setting the backup count and in our case the backup count will be coming from the function and we are setting the interval in hours so we can give some 24 hours for log rotation and then we are using a custom naming function because after to compress the logs as a zip file the extension should be dot zip instead of dot log right so that's why we are using a lambda function to create a custom log file namer to zip the logs when they are rotated we are using the custom log rotator here using this method called rotator and using the zip file python module we are actually zipping the log file and removing the old log file in this way using a custom log rotator we are actually zipping the log files since we want only the syslog message to be printed in the log file we are using the custom log formatter where i am telling that the format should contain only the syslog message i am creating the log formatter and assigning it to the log handler and once the handler is ready with all the namer rotator and the formatter I'm just adding the handler to the logger object which I've just created at the start of this function and now since our logger is ready I'm creating a logger adapter just in case you want to add extra attributes to your logs and change the format you can even skip this step and return the logger itself but if you want to copy paste this code I thought it would be better to give this option of logger adapter so we have just created a logger adapter and returning this logger adapter from this get file logger so you can just copy paste this function and use it in your code to get a file logger which actually incorporates log rotation and log compression so now the function is ready get file logger so let's try to use this function so here i'm using this get file logger method to create a custom logger and the name of the logger is app logger and the file path is logs.log here you can actually mention an absolute file path like c users whatever but here i'm just mentioning the log file path as logs.log and here we are mentioning the backup count that means only the latest 500 log files will be retained and i'm telling file rolling hours as 24 hours that means log will be rotated for every 24 hours and now i got my logger ready using this get file logger function let's try to use this logger to do the logging instead of using the default logging module so i'm going to delete this line and i'm going to write logger.info of data 
and that's it let's try to save this and run this now we are using the new logger which actually does the log rotation and compression upon rotating the logs let's try to open this index.py and let's try to run this to actually create logs and send to a syslog server so i'm going to open a new command prompt and i'm going to say python index.py and let's try to open the logs.log file here and here you can see the logs are being sent to the logs.log file you know just for fun instead of hours let's try to make this as seconds and let's try to see whether the logs are rotating after 24 seconds so i think already 24 seconds are over let's try to run this server and let's try to run our index.py in a new command prompt and here you can see i've got my logs zipped since i have mentioned 24 seconds let's try to wait another 24 seconds and let's try to run python index.py again you can see another zip file is created all right let's try to revert back our function for hours instead of seconds and now we have a very flexible syslog server that can send syslogs to a file and it can do log rotation and compression also in my example i have used time rotating file handler in your example if you want to rotate if a certain size is exceeded you can just use the rotating file handler and mention what is the size upon which the logs will be rotated that means you can say logs can be rotated after 1 mb of logs or 10 mb of logs or something like that all right you can see there are some hard coded variables in this python script i can just use the config file and move all this configuration to that json config file let's try to do that now i'm going to open a config file called config.json and this json file will have our configuration and let's try to use this configuration in our server.py file so let's try to read the json file first so i'm going to write import json and let's try to read the config.json file right so i'm going to write app config equal to json.load config.json and the host is going to be app config of host and the port is going to be app config of port let's try to keep it in the parallel window here and the log file path is going to be app config dot log file path app config dot log file path and backup count is going to be app config dot backup count so i'm going to write app config dot number of files retention and file rolling hours will be rollover hours here so i'm going to just copy paste this line here and app config of rolling file hours and that's it now we don't have any hard coded variables and you can leave your python script untouched and you can just change your config file to actually tweak the server so let's try to run this again and now our server is running and let's try to open a new command line and run our index.py which actually sends logs to syslog servers so i'm going to write python index.py and now you can see app log dot log is created it has the logs which you have sent all right now if you want to deploy this server without python dependency you can just use py installer to convert this server.py into an exe file right so i'm going to write py installer server.py minus minus one file and let's try to run this and now you got in the dist server.exe and you can run this server.exe and if you want to tweak this server.exe just copy this config.json and keep this here and now when you run the server.exe you just can change the configuration using this json file so let's try to open it integrated terminal here and just run server.exe and now your server is running so that's it guys this is how you can create your own syslog server in python that does log rotation and log compression also all right one thing you can notice here is you have to run this command python server.py or you have to run the server.exe to actually run the server and for that a command prompt should be open and if someone accidentally closes the command prompt your server will be stopped and you won't like it so for that you can actually use the nssm to run this server as a windows background service so for that let's try to create a batch file that actually runs this server so i'm going to create a new file and i will name it run server.bat and the command that runs the server is very simple python server.py and now let's try to use nssm to run this server so i'm going to write nssm install the service name which i'm just writing python server or python syslog server so let's try to run this and now you got the nssm command which is trying to install a windows service called python syslog server so let's try to give the path of the server so the path of the server will be run server.bat and it's going to start in that same directory and then i just have to mention one more thing called the logging of this command line so i'm going to write io and here i'm going to give the output std out stream so i'm going to select this let's try to dump the service logs in some text file so I'm going to create a new text file here, new text document and let's try to write this as service logs dot log. Let's try to select service dot logs log 
and that's it our windows service will actually do the logging into this service logs dot log and let's try to rotate the logs also so i'm going to say rotate logs for every 100 mb or 10 mb so 10 mb means one zero four eight five seven six zero zero bytes so that's it i mentioned the file rotation the windows service logs location and the main application location so that's it let's try to install the service now i'm going to say okay and now let's try to go to our services.msc and see whether our python syslog server is installed and you can see python syslog server is installed so let's try to right click and start this service and now our service is started so you can see this service logs.log and here you can see the command line coming here and let's try to send logs to our service now let's try to run our index.py which send logs to our server and here in applogs.log you got four lines let's try to run this again and here you got some six lines because our windows service is actually acting as syslog python server let's try to stop this now and now our syslog server is stopped let's try to configure the startup type here let's try to go to the properties and here you can see startup type is automatic that means whenever your system is restarted automatically this service will be started and if you want to delete this service in an administrative command prompt you can just write sc delete the name of the python service which is python syslog server okay its access is denied because it's not an administrative command prompt so i'm going to open a command prompt in administrative mode and i'm going to write sc delete python syslog server and that's it the service is deleted so that's it guys using nssm you can actually run your syslog server as a windows background service which looks like a production syslog server so if you want to know more about using NSSM, I already made a video on that and I will leave that video in the description. If you want to know more about logging Python module also, I've already made a video on that and I will leave that video in the description. So that's it guys. This is how we used Python to create our own syslog server, which actually does log rotation and log compression also. So once you set up the syslog server as a Windows background service, it's quite robust. And another thing you got to notice here is we are not using any external Python libraries, these library comes along with Python. So the dependency on third parties is also less. However, if your scenario is quite complex and your deployments are more mission critical, I advise you to use battle tested syslog servers like or syslog. But if your scenario doesn't permit you to use third party libraries, you can use this Python script to run your own syslog server. You can see I've created a blog post on creating a simple and customizable syslog server in Python. I've also given you the source code so that you can copy paste and practice it in your own computer. I've also mentioned links to various documentations so that you can do further reading. So be sure to check out the link of this blog post in the description of this video. Please ask questions or leave your valuable feedback in the comments section. Hope you like this video guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.